They can covertly travel hundreds of miles at a depth of up to 0.6 miles and explode off the coast of the United States, causing a radioactive tsunami that would sweep away everything in its path for tens of miles. What can we do to counter such a terrible weapon of the Russians? Meet the Virginia-class nuclear attack submarines. Throughout the history of the world, the seas remain the leading strategy for the deployment of military forces and equipment, and the oceans are the most convenient place to launch strategic strikes. Therefore, the fact is that whoever owns the sea, owns the world, remains relevant both before and today. This is evidenced by the long-lasting and numerous struggles between different states in all parts of the world for maritime borders, waters, and islands. Who is now in control of the ocean? the largest water body in our hemisphere. The Americans have 10 air strike groups in the world's oceans and dozens of nuclear submarines ready to deliver a deadly thermonuclear strike from the water column. Russia is also trying to keep up appropriating new areas of water armed with the Belgorod nuclear submarine with six to eight Poseidon nuclear attack drones with thermonuclear warheads on board. Such weapons pose a great threat the drones can travel hundreds of miles covertly at a depth of up to 0.6 miles and explode off the U.S. coast, causing a radioactive tsunami that would sweep away everything in its path for tens of miles and cause numerous casualties. A threat like this cannot be ignored, so what can be done to counter it? Today, we're going to analyze Virginia-class submarines. Before we start, please support our channel by subscribing. Your support greatly motivates us to create even more interesting content and speeds up the frequency of our videos. These fourth-generation submarines are designed to conduct independent operations against enemy submarines and surface ships approaching enemy shores undetected and launching missiles at continental targets hundreds of kilometers deep, including nuclear missiles. Combating enemy submarines, torpedo and missile strikes on surface targets radar and information support for underwater, surface and ground combat groups, electronic intelligence, video surveillance of communications and ship traffic, laying mines, obviously through torpedo tubes, special operations, reconnaissance, rescue, targeting, landing of reconnaissance and sabotage groups, etc. Given its extensive track record, can we say that Virginia is capable of overcoming the Belgorod we've already mentioned? Let's take a closer look at this issue. The design of the Virginia-class multi-purpose nuclear-powered submarine began in the late 1980s. Initially, the Virginia-class submarines were planned to replace the Los Angeles-class submarines, which was eventually realized. By the way, earlier the U.S. Navy leadership planned to replace the Los Angeles-class with Seawolf submarines, but soon abandoned this idea. The fact is that with the collapse of the Soviet Union and the rapid decline in the combat capabilities of the Russian Navy, Sea Wolf submarines became kind of a relic of the Cold War. Their main task, searching for, tracking, and destroying Russian Navy submarines, has largely become less of a priority. The Sea Wolf cost a lot of money and always hit the U.S. budget hard, so now the geopolitical situation played into their hands and allowed them to save money. As a result, in 1991, a model of a new nuclear submarine was approved and requirements for its technical characteristics were developed. The construction order was awarded to General Dynamics Electric Boat and Huntington Ingalls Industries. Currently, the U.S. Navy has 21 Virginia-class submarines. The newest is the Montana, which was commissioned on June 25, 2022, while the lead destroyer, SSN 774 Virginia, entered the stage in 2004. The United States plans to receive at least 34 Virginia-class submarines, all of which have even been named. The last Virginia-class submarine will be SSN 811. What are the characteristics of the simplified and cheaper alternative to the Sea Wolf submarines? The main technical characteristics are a hull length of about 113 meters, a width of 10.2 meters, and a displacement of 7,300 tons, which is less than the Sea Wolf submarine, which has 9,137 tons. As for the shape, the boat has a classic American submarine hull layout with a special hydroacoustic coating applied to the hull. The main ballast tanks are located in the bow and stern fairings. Externally, Virginia is very similar to Los Angeles, but the difference is the presence of an underwater sabotage compartment. The installed S9G nuclear reactor, which has a thermal capacity of 210 megawatts 
and can operate without refueling for 33 years. The boat itself has an identical service life, is also worth mentioning. Thus, for the first time, the idea of not refueling a nuclear reactor during the entire service life of the ship was realized. According to the classic American scheme, a propeller shaft was made which turns two turbines with a capacity of 40,000 horsepower. The driving force of this boat is a water jet. This construction scheme will ensure a lower noise level than that of the Russian fourth-generation Project 971 Pike B boats, or Shark in NATO terms. The ship is armed with subsonic Tomahawk cruise missiles mounted in vertical launchers. Virginia has 12 launchers with one missile in each. Future modifications of Block 5 will have four launchers with six missiles each. Thanks to the latest modification of Tomahawk cruise missiles, the BGM-109 Tomahawk Block 4, the missile can be retargeted in flight and can reach the barge while waiting for an attack order, which greatly increases the flexibility of this weapon system. In terms of armament, all Virginia-class submarines are equipped with four 533mm torpedo tubes for 26 MK-48 ADVCAP Mod 6 torpedoes, which are designed to engage surface targets and fast submarines, and use both active and passive homing systems. An important feature of these torpedoes is the presence of a multiple attack system, which is used when the target is lost. The torpedo searches, captures, and attacks the target independently. Thus, the range of the torpedo is up to 23 miles at a speed of 55 knots, or up to 30 miles at a speed of 40 knots. The maximum immersion depth is 800 meters. The torpedoes for these submarines are supposed to be analogous to harpoon missiles, which have a subsonic flight speed, a 500-pound explosive warhead, and a maximum range of 56 to 137 miles, depending on the carrier, missile modification, and target. The hydroacoustic system is another important thing when it comes to anti-submarine operations. Virginia's sonar armament includes the ANBQQ-10 sonar system. At one time, this system was also tested on the Seawolf, but over time, these boats had to abandon the wide aperture ANBQG-5D onboard sonar antennas in favor of the lighter ANBQG-5A. The fact is that Virginia's hull is much smaller, a difference of 2.5 meters, which meant that the bow had to be larger. In shallow waters, the mine threat is much greater, which required constant development and improvement of the existing sonar. Progress is reflected in the addition of a projection on the lower part of the newly built section of the boat, which houses a new antenna. The benefits of this improved antenna are the submarine's ability to maneuver confidently around uneven seabeds and to search for moored mines above ground. The nine-seat airlock chamber, which allows divers and special forces soldiers to be submerged, also provides a covert landing on the coast. Instead of a traditional periscope, it has a multifunctional telescopic mast that does not penetrate the robust hull. It's equipped with a television camera that transmits the image via a fiber optic cable to a screen in the central post, antennas for electronic intelligence and communications, and an infrared surveillance sensor. The infrared laser is used as a rangefinder. But was the reduction in the cost of expensive Seawolf submarines to low-cost Virginia worth it? The Soviet Union has inevitably collapsed, but the Russian threat is only growing and becoming more tangible every year. So is Virginia really a cheaper version of its predecessor? In December 1996, the cost of submarines of this type was determined as follows. The lead submarine, $3.272 billion. The second, $2.543 billion the third, $2.093 billion, and the fourth, $2.112 billion. But at roughly the same cost as the Seawolf submarine, the Virginia-class submarine has two-thirds of the ammunition of the Seawolf's and a torpedo salvo capacity that's 50% of the Seawolf salvo capacity. In addition, the Virginia-class boats are less adapted to Arctic operations and have a lower immersion depth. Photos are circulating online that question the quality of the submarine's construction, for example, some of them show that the special sonar coating that ensures the stealth of the submarine is disappearing. In 2019, a scandal erupted over this coating. A senior engineer at the Huntington Ingalls plant published information that the coating was of poor quality, the quality certificates were forged, and the company was not licensed to install the coating. As it turned out, this problem had existed since 2007 and had not been resolved. According to the National Interest, citing former U.S. Navy Chief of Staff Brian Howes, the boats are no longer amenable to improvement 
and have long since exhausted themselves. There's a widespread opinion that it's necessary to start building new submarines. Technology does not stand still. New developments always outperform their predecessors, but starting from scratch takes a lot of time and a lot of money, which complicates the whole situation. We showed you the Virginia boats from all sides without idolization or concealment. What do you think of them? Do they deserve their fame and the big words they're called by? Or is it a useless project that'll never repay the expenses it needed? We'd love to hear what you think. So leave your comments and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like the video. See you soon.